This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, where you'll build an army of legendary champions to do battle against powerful kings and dark wizards, just like the classic RPG and strategy games you love, but with millions of other players. And you can download it for yourself right now for free on PC and mobile with the link in the description. Raid has 16 different factions to choose from, like the Banner Lords, Dark Elves, and Orcs. We've been playing as the Knight's Revenant, a death cult of powerful dark warriors with our favorite hero Bystifus. We've been taking them into PvP matchups, and nothing is more satisfying than having your team of Bone Knights wipe out another player's champions. Now's the best time to jump into Raid, since they just released their biggest update ever. Doom Tower is a giant 120 floor tower with 12 bosses and tons of secret challenge rooms. There's 14 new champions too, just in time for the holiday events and tournaments. Get a head start by clicking the link in the description. A free Void Champion Bulwark, 50 Gems, XP Booster, Energy Refills, and an Ancient Shard are waiting for new players in their inbox, but only for 30 days. Download Raid now, and I'll see you in the game. September 5, 1901, Polish-American immigrant and devoted anarchist Leon Czolgosz watches President William McKinley deliver a moving speech to some 50,000 people at the Pan American Exhibition in Buffalo, New York. Czolgosz, gun in hand, shuffles through the crowd towards the president's podium but he can't get close to make his shot. A day later, Cholkos can get close. He skulks through the crowd once more, his gun wrapped in a handkerchief, and fires two shots right into the president's chest. The president falls, and holding his bloody chest, he tells his bodyguards, be careful how you tell my wife. Cholkos, once a child laborer in a tough Detroit steel mill, takes a beating from a furious mob. Several days later, McKinley dies from his injuries. A few weeks later, three rounds of 1,800 volts of electricity stop Sholgos's heart beating. The death of the president shouldn't have happened. He should have been better protected. There was only one thing to do, create a special protection service for the person in charge of running the country. The United States Secret Service Division wasn't actually created after that fateful day. It was President Abraham Lincoln who drew up the legislation. And then, guess what? He was whacked before he could see that legislation turned into a reality. Initially, the Secret Service was introduced to suppress counterfeiting, something that was pervasive in the US. Later, the division was tasked with investigating all matter of crimes, from bank robberies to murder to illegal gambling, but it was after McKinley was so easily taken out that the Secret Service was told one of its main responsibilities was to ensure the President of the USA was safe. As you'll see today, the Secret Service does a lot of things that you weren't aware of, some of them downright shocking, others kind of amusing. Number 12. You are what you eat Some of you POTUS fans out there might have considered sending a president some cookies you made, but it goes without saying that any kind of food sent to the leader won't get to him. What you might not know is that the Secret Service is very serious about the president's food. According to insiders, anything that's made in the White House is watched over by Secret Service agents. If POTUS goes out for food, he will likely not risk eating anything. What about presidential food tasters? Do they exist? Because we all know in the past, a lot of royalty and leaders were rightly paranoid about their food being poisoned. The Secret Service has always been quiet about whether the president has those guinea pigs we call food tasters, but we know for a fact that one time President Obama refused to eat because his food taster was not available. Apparently, his guest, who was a senator, said she had eaten some and she was okay, but Obama still didn't eat. There are other articles in the media that talk about the president's food tasters, men who usually work as Navy mess specialists but are watched over by the Secret Service. In conclusion, whatever POTUS puts in his mouth will have been scrutinized by his noble protectors. Ok, so we just called them noble, but as you'll see later, that's not always the case. Number 11. Poison Pen Letter You can actually email the president, according to the White House website, and you can also send him a typed or handwritten letter. But one thing you should know is you probably shouldn't write anything threatening. Otherwise, you might find yourself on the radar of the Secret Service. You might have sent a letter anonymously, but you ought to know that the Secret Service has people that are masters of ink analysis. They've been doing that for decades now, not only to find the authors of threatening letters, but as part of criminal investigations. They have an ink library containing over 15,000 kinds of ink, and while you might think all blue ink looks the same, there are slight differences in the hue because of the dyes used to make them. It's not always the threatening words, either. In 2014, a man was sentenced to 25 years in prison for sending a letter to the White House addressed to President Obama. He had dusted the letter with a deadly poison ricin. That same thing happened again in 2018 and then in 2020, each time the letters were stopped at a sorting facility and, you guessed it, the Secret Service was called to investigate. Number 10. When the Poop Hits the Fan 
There are thousands of Secret Service employees working in many areas. The guys who are tasked with being around the president all the time are only a small part of the organization. One thing they're very good at, the best at, is knowing what to do when things go very wrong. According to one former agent who wrote a book about his experience working in the Secret Service, the men closest to the president have to learn something called 10-minute medicine. It goes like this, whenever the president is out and about, he or she, in the future, will never be further than 10 minutes away from the nearest hospital. There is an agent in the hospital who has vetted the staff and will be with the president if he should be taken there. In the motorcade, there will be an agent holding bags of blood should the worst happen. Ok, if that's not surprising to you, listen to this. Number 9. When the President Needs to Go What do you think happens when the President has to expel his lunch and the drinks that went with it? We know the Secret Service follows the man everywhere, but really? To the restroom too? It seems the answer is yes. The agents might in some cases have to be inside the restroom when the President is dropping off kids at the pool, and it goes without saying that the places have already been checked out and given the green light, but most times the President will have a portable toilet with him on his travels. In 2017, there were media stories talking about how many thousands of dollars the Secret Service was spending on luxury portable restrooms. We found older news articles that talked about agents following President Clinton to the restroom, which we guess however well you're trained is not the best of jobs, especially when POTUS feels like he's going to explode. It's the same with hospital visits. Some US presidents you could say have been in their autumn years, and others have hit their midwinter years, and that usually means a lot of trips to see the doctor. When President Reagan went to get his prostate exam, guess who was standing in the room next to him? You guessed it, his armed Secret Service agent. Yeah, those guys hold a lot of secrets, including how a president reacts to having a doctor's digits shoved into its backside. Number 8. The family gets special treatment too. As it stands, the president and vice president get around the clock security, and by law they are not allowed to refuse it. Their family can, but they cannot. Even when they are no longer in office, the president and vice president can get the same protection as can their kids if it's requested. The children of Bill Clinton and George W. Bush still had Secret Service agents following them around when they were in college. Sometimes the treatment goes too far. The young daughter of Jimmy Carter was followed around at school by agents, and if they didn't do what she wanted them to do, like take her to a friend's house, she'd call her father to tell them to do it. She was also a bit of a rascal, sometimes throwing food crumbs on the floor and expecting the agents to pick them up. Her brother, Chip, was much worse. He'd get drunk and bring women back to the White House. One time, he brought Willie Nelson back, and they both got high on the White House roof. We just kept going up till we got to the roof, where we leaned against the flagpole at the top of the place and lit one up," Chip said years later. There's no way they did that without the Secret Service knowing about it. It seems the agents have to put up with a lot, but according to one former agent, there are some things they will never do. They are not servants, so don't even try and ask them to carry your bags or do the dishes. The next one should be a warning to anyone thinking about turning up at a parade and giving POTUS a hard time. Number 7. They try to shoot everything. It's rare that a Secret Service agent has to pull out his gun when he's around the president, but one thing some agents pull out is a video camera of some sort. The reason being, of course, is if anything crazy does happen, they'll have video footage to analyze. That's happened a bunch of times when people have thrown things such as water balloons, eggs, and even tomatoes. The worst case scenario, of course, is not a bit of egg on the president's face, but a bullet in his head. It's a pity they didn't have better technology back in the day to film that infamous grassy knoll. Number 6. They give the president some privacy. It must get annoying sometimes having agents follow you around everywhere, so maybe that's why they don't always stay on the president's tail when he's inside the White House. Maybe that could get dangerous, but in the White House, there are weight-sensitive pressure pads, so the agents know where the president is stepping. If he's in any trouble, there are all kinds of special ornaments the president can touch that will raise alarm to the agents. Number 5. Presidents get code names. When agents are talking about POTUS, they often use code names. For instance, Reagan was codenamed Rawhide due to his acting in Western movies. John F. Kennedy was codenamed Lancer, which was related to King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Jimmy Carter was sometimes referred to as the Deacon because he was a very religious man. Lyndon B. Johnson got Volunteer, and we're not sure why. Bill Clinton got Eagle, and his wife Hillary got Evergreen. Usually the code names all start with the same letter. Maybe the coolest names were for George H. W. Bush and his wife, which were Timberwolf and Tranquility. Maybe the Secret Service inspired the X-Men franchise. Bush Jr. was named Trailblazer, and Obama was named Renegade. Maybe the most fitting name was for Richard Nixon, who was named Searchlight. 
Donald Trump got the name Mogul and his wife Melania got the rather sweet name of Muse, as Vice President Joe Biden was nicknamed Celtic. Number 4. The Public Stresses the Secret Service Out According to those who've worked as agents, the most stressful part of the job is when the president is meeting with the public and doing a lot of handshaking. That often takes place when the public stands behind a rope and there are usually a lot of people around. One of the reasons agents wear sunglasses is so people can't see their eyes. What they're usually looking at is anyone putting their hand into a bag or looking suspicious in general. Now for something kind of funny. Number 3. Agents have to bond with POTUS Not surprisingly, if someone is with you almost all of the day, it serves to be able to do what the president wants to do. President Reagan famously loved riding horses, and at the time that meant his Secret Service agents had to ride with him. Secret Service agent John Barletta rode a lot of horses with Reagan over the years, something he said he enjoyed immensely. Other agents might have to learn different hobbies, depending on what the president likes to do in his free time. If POTUS is a good runner, the agents that go with him better make sure they can keep up. Bill Clinton was good at running, and even though his agents persuaded him not to run on public trails, Clinton refused. One former agent wrote a book called Within Arm's Length, The Extraordinary Life and Career of a Special Agent in the United States Secret Service, and he called this part of his job a nightmare. Not because Clinton was hard to keep up with, but because public spaces are dangerous places. Many presidents like to play golf, but that doesn't mean the agents have to play the game with them. It does mean they have to follow the president around the 18 holes, and without a doubt, they will do that packing a firearm. One agent once said he hated the golf course because there was so much open space, which as you know always creates a lot of stress for an agent. Another agent that followed Nixon around golf courses wasn't so much annoyed about the risks POTUS was taking, but the crappy golf Nixon played. The agent wrote in his book, when you saw him play golf, you were embarrassed for him. I mean, it was awful. Presidents can be awful in other ways, too. Number 2. Not all presidents are easy to work with Lyndon Johnson was apparently bossy and liked to shout at his agents. One time he fired two guys because they refused to break a traffic law when driving into his destination. Agents have said Johnson had extramarital love affairs that were hard to deal with. They said he reprimanded them for not telling him that his wife was on her way to the White House when he was making out with one of his secretaries in the Oval Office. His wife actually caught them in the act, which forced the cheater to install an alarm system. As for other promiscuous rogues in the White House, you can only imagine how many secrets agents have held over the years. One thing is for sure, what happens in the White House stays in the White House, usually. Number 1. Men Behaving Badly if some presidents have had behavioral problems, so too have some of the men tasked with protecting them. In 2012, agents protecting Obama in Colombia got in trouble after a prostitute they'd hired complained they hadn't paid her enough. Obama wasn't a happy man, and this turned into a huge scandal at the time. The party sounded more like an orgy, involving at least 20 women and 11 agents as well as military personnel. At the time, Obama said, if it turns out that some of the allegations that have been made in the press are confirmed, then of course I'll be angry. He soon became angry. It gets worse. Reports stated that some of the agents were bragging to the women, saying things like, hey, you know why we're here? We protect the leader of the free world. This wasn't the best thing to do, seeing as Colombia drug cartels have used prostitutes as spies. It wasn't the first nor will it be the last time that agents have gotten drunk and done something stupid. Maybe they can be forgiven. It's gotta be a stressful job. Now you need to watch this, the insane protection of the President of the United States, or have a look at this, how protected is the British royal family?